And I want to pay compliment to Harriet. Harriet is our lead producer. Harriet, what's your second name again? Asumda. Harriet Asumda Mensah. Mrs. Harriet Asumda Mensah. Thank you for all you do. As well as Purple Amos. Um, good morning to you as well. And our lead producer for the morning, uh, Oliver Lawson. Great work. And for all the crew, Amuncho, we are grateful that even though we don't see you, you try to make us look good as much as you can. And uh, as we do that, please, we do encourage you, send us messages, because today, let's put a template again so that uh, our viewers will get to know what we're talking about this morning. Uh, we're talking about a brouhaha at all. There's a controversy. It's a big controversy, huge controversy brewing at all in its relation, relation to leasing of the facility to an entity called Terentco. And, um, well, we have energy experts, those in civil society, raising concerns about it. We'll bring you a preview of that. We will um, raise on the line Benjamin Boachi. He's executive director for the Africa Center for Energy Policy. And, um, that's it. and then on, on, on the last part, for the last 15 minutes, we'll be looking at the NDC raising concerns that apparently there seemed to be a deliberate effort by um, the security of the state whether it's a police, national security, um, to beef up security at Asenov. The question they're asking is, it is not a flashpoint. It is not a hot spot. It is just a by-election. Well, why the intention to deliberately mass up security personnel at Asenov in a run-up to this by-election? And we know that there's a hot contest and... Um, We'll, we'll take a look at that. So we do encourage you to join us on our stream. TV3 Ghana, go look for us. Um, already we have some great people who are joining us this uh, morning on the stream. We're grateful that you've been able to join this morning. I see Kin Breezy. Kin Breezy, good morning to you. Money, ni money, my favorite. I'm a phobie. If you haven't joined, please join. Uh, Seiram Abive uh, Ransford, thank you for joining us. I'm a, I'm a Mac Gold. Please join, and then Shadai Adote, you're already here. Good morning to you, Shadai. Now, this tour related lease agreement generating this controversy has now raised questions from civil society, but also monitoring by the media. Well, Bright Simmons decided to raise the issue. Civil society has joined the fray, and it's a big thing. Why? Is this a big discussion? We have this wrap up by George Queenin. Watch this. And when we come back, we'll raise Ben Bwachi and then start the discussions also right here in the studio. The quest to revive the Tema oil refinery appears to be one that would take a long time, if not forever. Staff over the years have demonstrated of operational abilities and the need for a management that understands the purpose of bringing the state owned company back to life. In March, the Energy Minister met with staff over a possible lease agreement for operationalization of the facility for the next six years. But that was put on hold until workers of the refinery got familiar with content of the document. The bad nut in the refinery must be exposed. The refinery needs resilient to work and that, that is all that we are advocating for. Fast forward to today, government is allegedly planning to lease tour to a private firm Torrentco Asset Management for six years. This has come with lots of public backlash, with many questioning the agreement and others demanding government to confirm the truth or otherwise of the agreement. Should the agreement take effect, Torrentco Asset Management will be allowed to refine up to 8 million barrels of oil annually, paying an annual rent of $1 million to the government. The contract also includes an additional rent of $1.067 million per month. If Tom refines more than 8 million barrels, it will pay 5 cents for each extra barrel. Also, if it stretches the refinery to its full limit, a refined 16.5 million barrels will pay $17.2 million in rent, resulting in a sales value of $2.148 billion. But Imani Africa strongly opposes this agreement. Its Vice President Kofi Bento demands transparency and openness. The deal is bad. We don't know who the real directors are, and our checks are showing that they are fronts for other people. It's unfortunate, and um, we hope that is clarified. Who are the people behind you know, the present lease? And why it is important is that 
who stands behind this deal says a lot about their credibility and what they come to the table with. Just so you know, the total operating expenses for TAM are $20 million, with TAM investing $22 million to revamp the refinery. For Kofi Bentel, TOR is an asset that can generate millions of dollars than what will be derived from this very deal. There is no value for money in it for Ghana, and it is just one of the same things that we've been doing all over this time where people parcel up you know, state assets for their friends and then leave us with the debts and then the liabilities. It is on record that CSO sought some answers from government, but they were not forthcoming. But those that spoke to the agreement were quite defensive. In the coming days, TOR Professional and Managerial Staff Union and the General Transport Petroleum and Chemical Workers Union of TUC will be holding a press conference to make known their decision on this very matter. We will be following closely on this very development and update you accordingly. Josh Quinn in TV3 News, Accra. Now on social media, the phraseology is who is chopping from this time our refinery deal? Who are the faces behind this company? And is there going to be value for money? Do we need this at all? Can't we find alternative means by which we need to put all? And is it for the best interest of the country? Uh, Awa Muhammad is representing the government of Nanado Dankwe Kufado. Ably represented, uh, he's one of um, the big wigs in the MPP supporting uh, DMB for 2024. Good morning to you. It is possible. Good morning. Yes, how, it's possible. Oh, uh, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. All right. How are you too? Nice. And then also, uh, Sampi Yale is a legal practitioner. He's also a traditional ruler. He's, uh, he's currently also, is it the chairman or the president for the NDC's president. professional forum? President. President. He's president for the NDC's professional forum. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Now, um, we've been uh, joined on the line by Ben Bwache. Ben Bwache is a distinguished executive director for the Africa Center for Energy Policy. He's a regular contributor to the show, as well as um, when it comes uh, to research into energy, into making sure that we also have some great policy directions into Ghana's energy, Africa's energy. He's right here. Good morning to you, Mr. Ben Bwache. Uh, good morning, my brother, and good morning to colleagues in the studio as well. Mm. Good morning. Now, from your own readings, analysis of existing literature and the information you're getting, why, uh, why is this deal, this so-called lease um, of Tema Oil Refinery and its facilities to the entity bad for Ghana? Yes, uh, thanks. I think uh, the you know, fact that we need investment in tour and also a change of strategy management and you know changing the operations of tour from profit uh, loss making to profit making it's not lost on anyone i mean it is well known we have written extensively looking at tour in the past 20 years and we were of the firm belief that we are at that point where we need private sector participation in the operations of the company um, the, the problem we have right now is how it is being done. Because if you really want to transform TOR from um, loss-making to profit-making, you first of all need partners who have experience and track record uh, to be able to deliver that value. All right? Not politicians, not friends, uh, not people who call the shots, but real credible people that you can track and say that <clears throat> these are people who have done it before, and you can bet on their capacity, experience, and financial muscle mm -hmm. to be able to uh, transform the company. What we have seen in recent times of the attempt to hand over the asset to some companies are just some shadowy individuals, uh, you know, pretending to have money uh, to be able to use the asset. Uh, uh, you know, and we find that very troubling because mm. if you hand over, I mean, forget about even the money, which we think is very small even for this particular transaction. Mm -hmm. Even if they promise you having an uh, and you don't have capacity, mm -hmm. we will still keep talking about it. So the only security you have is the experience and capacity of the of, of the proposed investor or supposed investor which gives you some comfort that at least they've done it before or they have the money uh, to at least 
assure you that you are better right. Okay, but to just hand over the asset to a company that just sprang forth, uh, set up quickly, I mean, individuals behind it don't have any experience in the oil and gas business, and then convincing the nation mm. that they can manage our asset. I mean, it's just one of the many deals that we've been talking about in the energy sector that keeps us troubled. Why we do this to ourselves, you know, as the people, and end up, you know, creating a lot of unwarranted debt uh, that the citizens have to pay for. If you try the history of toll mm. and how much the public has paid, it's staggering, right? We've been paying toll debt recovery levy for over 20 years, and there is no end in sight. Even as we speak, the levy cannot pay for the past debt or the accumulated debt that are sitting on our books, all right? Mm -hmm. And we still keep paying from the budget. The taxes that we pay that are supposed to go to build the roads, the hospitals, are being used to support inefficiencies in the energy sector, including the tolls, uh, uh, debt, and its operations. And we don't have the roads. <laughs> we don't have the hospitals. Uh, you know, and people are dying. And these are the, the worry that civil society, you know, has when we try to intervene to help government to think right and take the decisions that actually benefit. Uh, people and deviate from the unwarranted dissipation of resources through some of these vehicles uh, that don't really generate uh, value. What we have also seen is that even in the past year or so, where we decided that we were looking for investors in Tor, mm -hmm. we have had and seen many proposals, many people are interested in Tor. There are many of the IOCs mm -hmm. that would greatly want to invest in Tor uh, you know, and make money. So the way to do this, you know, above board, is to say that these are my parameters. This is what I'm looking for, for the operations of Tom. Don't sit there as if you don't know anything, right? And that's the worry I have about Ghana. We sit there as if we are clueless about everything. Then the supposed investor says, I want to do X, Y, Z and give you that. And that is what everybody is running with. We have capable men and women in our country mm. that could draft our aspirations for Tom. And say that we want anybody who wants to operate or and give us, say, $50 million, $100 million. This is what our assessment says. Who wants to bid on it? On it? Let us not be like we don't know what to do with our assets. And that's essentially what we are doing. Right. The company suddenly spring for no experience, no capacity, mm. and they're able to tell Thor what they can offer. Mm -mm. And we don't know what we want for the infrastructure. Mm. And these are the people who are managing our assets. Now, um, based on your experience in the energy sector, on the policy level, on your own observational surveys by visits and interactions in other countries, not only in Africa and around the world, um, TOR, is TOR an asset or not? Or the liabilities of TOR, can they be turned around for it to be productive? or have a return on those assets or investments? I mean, Tor can operate like any other refinery. We agree that some investments are required to make it more efficient, to process crude to the most acceptable standards of uh, our world today, where countries are doing 10 ppm. Uh, we have a benchmark around 50 ppm uh, uh, of sulfur content. Uh, we need the investment to be able to reduce that. But they have a special dispensation even with the MPA to be able to do uh, above 500 ppm. Mm. So, I mean, they can refine. They can refine at the margin and be able to, over time, raise investment uh, to fix those things. But there are some managerial political inefficiencies that really makes it difficult for Tor to operate. I mean, there are even refineries in Ghana that are doing 5,000, uh, 2,000. Mm. They are managing and they are working, right? Uh, there are context issues that isolate TOS, you know, problems from any other refinery. And those are the ones that you expect politicians to have the capacity to deliver on uh, and then allow TOR to function as, 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 as a business. I mean, this is a, uh, the biggest refinery in Ghana, more or less uh, a monopoly, uh, until we now have Centio uh, also coming up mm. that's opposite at TOR. Beyond that, they have a lot of tankage. They have capacity to store products 
and, and, and turn around, you know, using that to also generate revenue. But they have had tests, you know, product tests. And these are not gold bars. So these are uh, uh, tons of oil products that get stolen. Mm-hmm. And as a country of PADs, masters, you know, politicians, fine speech delivering politicians, and we sit there and we are able to convince ourselves that oil can be stolen from a tank, put in on a truck to go and sell, and it's fine. All right? So these are the kind of inefficiencies that we are always explained, uh, explained to us, and we are expected to absorb it, take it as, as it's okay, it can be stolen and nothing should happen. All right? and, and these are not difficulties of a typical refinery. These are tests, you know, and it shouldn't be a problem for us, uh, a difficult problem for us to address to allow to, to function. But we have shown that we are incapable of dealing with that. And that's why we have proposed that the private sector arrangement could help. Mm. But not the nature that just hand over the asset mm. to somebody if we don't know what we want uh, uh, to do with the asset uh, altogether. So those are the problems we, we have been grappling with for which we continuously pay toward that recovery levy. We continuously lose money. And then the, the companies who store their product or toy will go to finance ministry, negotiate and get paid. Mm. And then the cycle continues. So we are always paying. We are paying people who oh, have just put their that. product in toy tanks and it is stolen by political appointees. And then the finance ministry will find money to pay. And then the cycle continues. You know? I mean... Mr. Bwachi, from, from, from the way you are talking, I, I can feel your pain. Is it because you feel that the managers of the entity and the sector know what is supposed to be done, but have deliberately just decided to look on the other side and not do proper consultation or even listen to you, civil society? No, you see, we are just being nice about the words, but you see, it undermines the integrity of everybody working in the space. Okay, so there's pure corruption in the the system. The intelligence of everybody working in that space to assume that we cannot manage anything and make it work. And that is the reality that we are having to face as a country, that anything that we manage, it cannot work as a people. That is embarrassing enough yeah. for us to just keep laughing over these things. And as everything is a deal, even in our hardship, in our pain as a people, look at what we're going through. We need money to be able to pay our debt. We need money to survive in this economic hardship. We need to be able to uh, revive the economy. And these are in, you know, structures that we have that we should find ways to turn them around to make their contribution to the development of our country and the resuscitation of the economy. And then people are just handing them out as if they are just uh, a piece of cakes that we are sharing. And everybody can take their share at any point uh, that they want. You know, so these are very disheartening moments to, to see in this harsh economic situation that you need robust analytical mm. powers to be at play yeah. uh, to ensure that every asset, every decision that we are making, mm. actually elevating Ghana beyond our problems mm. and making sure that we can address these problems uh, 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 and, and bring our, 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 our on the path of sustainability. Mr. Mbwache, some people have to be jailed for this. I mean, it's, it's, it's a hard call, but I mean, in any country, I mean, to see Tom mismanaged over a 20-year period, billions, all right, billions of dollars have been paid for the resuscitation of the, of, of the business. And it become as usual. You can go there, abuse it as you want, and then walk home, <clears throat> all right? So that is maybe another conversation uh, for another day, but that is who we are. That's what we have entrenched our, our our system to, to, to look like, you know, we give you power, we give you assets, you abuse it all you want, and then you are, you are fine to go, uh, you know, after that. That is a system we have built over time. Oh. And, and to, to even think that anybody will be jailed for that, I mean, it's, it's, I, don't, I don't see how that will happen uh, in, in, in our context. But ideally in some other countries, this, this should have been the case, right? Absolutely. I mean, it, it won't happen. It won't happen in any advanced world to see that petroleum products are stolen, millions of products are stolen, and we can't know who stole it, we can't know who sold it, we can't find where it passed, 
which truck picked the product and which filling station uh, consumed it, I mean, it's, it's unthinkable. Ben Boache, thank you. When we need you again, we'll, we'll call you since you're on, on the road and also uh, having some um, important meetings this morning. So let's not worry. Ben Boache is Executive Director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy. They're always on top of all the relevant energy issues. Imani Africa also had been raising the issues. And, um, a wow. What have you been picking up to be the excuse for what the civil society organizations in energy are raising to be a very shady deal for which people need to be answerable for. Because Thank you so it, much. they say it smacks <coughs> of um, uh, any transparency, it lacks that transparency, and it's purely not value for money. Thank you so much. Um, good morning to our cherished viewers, and um, a good morning to my uncle, uh, Sam Piali. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. I think um, uh, it's good that you have civil society uh, organizations or advocacy for these things so that at least it streamline a lot of things that we do. And again, I will want to put on record that no deal has been struck. Uh, there is no deal for because uh, on social media and uh, even some mainstream media, uh, people are saying that Tor has been sold. Tor has not been sold. There is a process of leasing uh, to, or if you like, to really bring in a private involvement in TOR so that at least we make it viable. From what Ben Boache has said, we all believe, we all around this table believe that TOR can work better, especially when there is private involvement. TOR is 100% Ghanaian. And when you check almost all the companies that are 100% Ghanaian, sometimes we tend to have issues. It's sad. If you check the, uh, the, the last comments of um, Ben Boache on why do we have to really have private people to be able to manage our own assets and so on. But unfortunately, that is what it are, it's turning to be. Look at Gassem. Because there is a huge private invest, uh, involvement, it's working well. Look at Coil is one of the most efficient run um, uh, state institution, even because we have private involvement and so on. So looking at the history of TOR and the depth and the, the involvement and a lot of things that's ha that happens with TOR, we all believe that there should be a private involvement in TOR. Because if you look at the depth alone at TOR, it's almost becoming unsustainable. I remember when former President Kofo took over in the year 2000. Uh, there was a huge debt of around $300 million at that time. And uh, that was the reason in 2003 the Tor Debt Recovery Levy was introduced. Uh, I heard Ben Boache mention that we've been paying it for the past 20 years. So that at least we were able to really offset these debts and so on. At a point in time, I remember in September 2016, the same ASAP, uh, that's uh, Bemboache, is now the executive director, did a research and said the collections from Tor Debt Recovery Levy between 2009 and 2015 alone should be able to offset all the debt that we, ha we have at all. But unfortunately, it was not. Because when we took over in 2017, Tor Debt alone was around $750 million. Even though DNDC may argue that, well, we introduced energy sector levies. Yes, it's true. They introduced it. The collection started in 2017. We accrued a, some substantial amount of money from the uh, ESLA. But we met over $2.4 billion debt in the energy sector alone, which tour debt is part of it. So we'll have to use it to offset. As I speak right now, from the $750 million, we've at least scaled it down to around $450 million. So we all feel, we all understand that there is the need for us to have a strategic partner to be able to really make it viable. People are there working. They, there are provident funds that is supposed to be paid to the workers. It's not being paid. Huge sums of money and so on. So the government took a decision, let's get a strategic partner. 
Then, in trying to do this, we brought in Torrentco. Torrentco did not come in as an individual um, uh, uh, company to manage Tor. They came in as a consortium. One of their partners is Vitor, which has over 50 years' experience in, uh, in the energy sector. So, yes, it's good that the... Uh, the, the, the How the, were they selected? Was it through a competitive tendering process? No, it was through um, uh, sole sourcing. Why? Yes, because that, that is the need for, for, for that. Because if you check what we have, we've gone through over the years, the number of people who have come in to really express interest to, 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 to invest in Tor, you need to get someone with the capacity, with everything to be able to do it. And soul sourcing is not a crime. Soul sourcing is part of our laws. It's a lawyer, he understands it. Soul sourcing is really not something that really... Uh, it's illegal. They brought in their strategic partners. Uh, the tour board sent the deal to public procurement authority for them to scrutinize and see whether there is really value for money, whether the deal is really the right deal for us as a country. PPA sat on it. This is not something that happened two months or three months or four months ago. The meeting by PPA board alone was just less than two weeks ago. Just two weeks ago. Don't you think that if we have had a more competitive tendering process or mm. bidding process where we had collected bids from other entities, we could have gotten an entity that gives us more value for money than all the concerns that have been raised by civil society? I, I, I don't really have the technical argument to determine that. You don't have the technical argument to determine yeah, that? Yes, to, to argument, to, 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 to determine that whether uh, it's supposed to be uh, open tender or uh, the uh, restricted, restricted or, tender or, or, or sole sourcing. No. Those at top felt that, especially the board of top felt that, let's have it uh, as a sole source. But they wanted to do due diligence they did not really start it and they just <laughs> offloaded it to Torrentco. They said, let's do due diligence. So they sent the thing to PPA, which is what is supposed to be done, for them to scrutinize and look at it and see whether there is value for money. PPA sat on it just less than two weeks ago. After that meeting, they sent it to the Ministry of Finance to work out the, 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 the mathematics of the finances and everything and they are clothed with the, with the responsibility to be able to really advise whether we have to go or not so then the uh, civil society organizations just entered and said they believe that there are some certain things that needs to be streamlined and so on so i don't see anything wrong with really uh, the what the civil society organizations are saying but government has not also done anything untold. There is no deal that has been struck. It's a proposal they brought in. They have partners. If really Torrentco is not very credible, Vitol, with their experience and track record, will never wish to partner such a, count, uh, such a company to work at all. And Vitol alone has about three or four uh, uh, refineries in different continents. So with all these, their track record, they are stated as partners to Torrentco. But it's something that they have really uh, proposed. It's a proposal they have sent. The tour board sent it to PPA. PPA said, okay, well, we've looked at it, but let's send it to the Ministry of Finance because there are, there are a lot of finance bits and so on, so that the finance ministry should be able to advise on what to do. That is the state or the stage of the, uh, the, the, the deal as we speak right now. So a deal has not been struck. Um, uh, Tor has not been sold. There is a strategic partner that has come on board that wants to manage Tor for six years. And after that, it will revert back to Ghana. If really there are issues that everyone is raising, they should raise the issue so that when the finance ministry is looking at all these things, that's why I said, what uh, so I have- you're saying that they should raise the issues. Yes, they but should. they will be corrected and then we'll move on. No, I'm not saying no, that. what are you if saying? If there need be that they should only correct and move on, the correction will be done. Yeah. If there need be that we'll have to really stop the deal, looking at uh, maybe 
the finances and some few other things that they believe that we need to stop or uh, the, 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 uh, the, the deal should not be struck with them. We just do that. But at the moment, there's no deal that has been struck. Tor is still 100% Ghanaian owned. Torrentco has not been given the go ahead to manage our assets. The, the, the deal is with the Minister of Finance and they are scrutinizing it. Mm. You spent 10 minutes explaining this to me. So 10 minutes? It, yeah, you did. Wow. So oh, it doesn't for like mean that you, you take 10 minutes. Well, okay. It's just like the, the issue. So you are explaining, explaining. <laughs> but it, it also means that, look, if you look at historically what Tor is, um, the debt that it's gone through over the last decade and a half, uh, a strategic partner is needed. I think the question that all of us are raising, including civil society, which foremost lays at the forefront of all this, is that you look at um, what needs to be done, that strategic partner with all, or through the Ministry of Energy, would have to be chosen for the mutual benefits of not only Tor, but also the government of Ghana. Now, this is where the problem is, is that not it? Well, uh, Rana, good morning. Um, yesterday, my twin brother, you know my twin? I didn't know that. My twin brother. Please get closer to the mic. My twin brother went to London, and this morning he has sent me a message that he's going to watch us. So, Good morning, uh, twin. Please watch us. Kakra <laughs> and uh, our boys there. Um, Roland, we need strategic thinking to solve this problem instead of strategic partners to solve this problem. Listening to one of the workers, he said, over the years, they have had management that did not know why Tor was established. And that is a very profound statement. You know when Osajifu established the refinery? Perhaps it was the first in West Africa and the biggest. If you read the vision of Tor, it was be to be the foundation of our industrial development as a country. Are we saying that we don't need that industrial development anymore? You are from Tema. You see, Tor was located in the industrial heart, and industrial heart of Tema. True. Actually, and I have known many people who have worked. That is there. where all the major industries gravitated. Right? The essence of establishing Tor was not to establish it to become a, a net debtor. Now, when you to what are you doing? You bring in crude oil, refined. And from the crude oil, you are going to get many, many byproducts. I want also yeah. kerosene, premiums, and others. So the product you bring, the byproduct alone should be able to offset part of the cost. Right? But over the years, we have seen toll going down and down and down and down. The only thing that has kept toll running is the vigilance of the Petroleum and Chemical Workers Union of Tor. Because anytime we, we politicians want to go around the problem and not solving the problem, the workers rise up. I am not in the school of thought that says that government cannot do business. I'm not of, of that at all. Because as a developing country, we need to set our national priorities and know which assets we can hold and which assets we can give out. Because the history of our extractive industry have shown that if we had kept the golden share in our minerals, yeah. we would not be where we are. Mm. History has also shown that if we had been careful with the arrangement agreement we signed over the discovery of oil discoveries, we would not be 13% shareholders. Roland, if you go to China to go and borrow, is it not the state that is borrowing that lending us the money? Yeah. When they bring the Chinese companies, companies, the companies they bring, uh, China Railways and the rest, are they not government state-owned uh, 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 enterprises? Why did we then establish 
the Ghana Institute of Management and uh, Public Administration. Why did we establish it? To have human resource to manage our assets. Not so. Mm. To manage our assets. Now we have a company that alone can save this country's economy. At the time Kwame Nkrumah established the refinery, we did not even have, uh, we have not even discovered oil. Yeah. But he had a foresight that one day Ghana may discover oil. So he put out the Tema refinery. Now you have found oil, you are going to lease it to a private company. And the, from the discussions, the experts are coming. They say that the company do have a track record and those things. You see, but Ben, you are not helping the discussions well. Why not? Let me explain. It plays everything into perspective. Now, it is about time that when you want to heal the wound of your nephew, you clean it properly and dress it. How do you mean? Okay. You just cannot put an allegation that people put oil in tanks and people steal it and they manage to go to public uh, finance to go and collect their money. You can't put such allegation to be the reason why a certain action should not be taken. Let me just, uh, I'm okay. coming. But these things do happen. So, this morning, I was expecting to discuss some yelling and a wild company, right? Were, were, were aided by uh, Roland to put 5,000 liters in gold, uh, tall. Yes. Mm. And you haven't been in this country where we oh, have where, where we have tanks that um, were adulterated, right? Ma, With ma, oil that were adulterated. Ma, ma, had to be sold off, right? That's why we talk about things two days and then you another attempt come and we have forgotten it and we are mm. floating. Mm. Mm. I get you now. I get you. You are making a specific allegation, generalized though, yeah. that some people have brought tall down because they steal products. As civil society, you have, you, you have a, a certain privilege that me, for instance, here will not have. Because me, I don't even understand the oil industry apart from the legal aspect of it. So I expect the ASAP and the rest. But they do. Well, if they do and we have not solved the problem, then we have a problem. But, but. <laughs> you understand? Because the essence of raising an issue is to look for solutions. Roland, I, I, as a trade unionist, the whole of trade union activities in the 70s and 80s was based on the activities of TOR, guy, guy workers on strike, that mm, time was mm. small, but... <laughs> Missouri and the rest of them. Mm. Anytime there was going to be a strike, government was looking for toil not to take part. And I'm saying that if they are vigilant, that has kept that company up to this time. Now let us come to the situation where today everything is going under the hammer. I don't understand. Me meaning what? You're okay. You know, we have come through a period of diversification and at a point we said that with hindsight we should not have taken a certain course not so that of diversifying certain industries but unfortunately the issue was that the machinery that were uh, imported into those uh, just those uh, factories that come come around at that time when the Romanians went away we couldn't have the replacement mm. so if we were a conscientious country what we would have done was that, okay, there's new technology on the horizon for textile. You know, GTP, no, no GTP, GTMC. I mm, know GTMC. When those days, they have bus, to me GTMC. buses that, that in the evening will haul about 2,000 workers. Right? We had uh, publishing, Tema, the Tema Enclave. I worked with SNED there, and we know the worker population there. The concept that government does not do business is what has killed us today. The concept that government does not have the business to do business. Now there's also this creeping pension for selling off government assets. 
to persons without any background in the industry they are supposed to be operating. There's also the fear that politicians are clandestinely, clandestinely underpricing some of state assets only for them to go behind and buy them, which has been raised. It's about time that we all forget about NDC and PP and talk about Ghana. Because it is that which is eventually getting our youth unemployed. Are you following me? If we all believe that there must be youth employment, proper youth employment and not vote harvesting, we could say that, look, from Thor, you can get kerosene. We can get butamine. We can get gas oil, mm -hmm. diesel, many, many things. Black oil. Black oil, whatever it is. So, let us now apply common sense to say that, look, we have goil. You know goil? Goil. Mm. Which is the marketing aspect of the oil industry. Mm. So, now, how much is goil uh, to owing? Goil, you have the expertise. Or employ more experts to goil. Assess the value. We are still paying energy recovery levy. Tall recovery levy. So within two years, we should be able to pay a certain percentage or a certain amount of the debt. Okay? So that that asset could not be one of the assets we gave out and regretted. If Goyle takes up, the energy recovery levy is still being paid. And we put Tor on the securities and uh, what? Exchange. Mm -hmm. So that you and I can buy shares in it. Roland, we will fix our roots. We will create employment. We will do so many things. This penchant of underpricing products like for sale. You know that my, my favorite commander should get factory. Mm -hmm. You know, to date, that factory which we have borrowed money to build is in the bush. Today it will be open in April. Another, but meanwhile, the loan has not been frozen. The interest has not been frozen. We are going to pay for it. So couldn't we have said, look, I think, Roland, let me repeat. We need a ministry of common sense. We need a ministry of common sense. Because if you put all the, yesterday, on this same uh, platform in the evening, there was a committee's report I was listening to but, uh, around 10 o'clock. Mm, mm. Ghana tonight. Ghana tonight. Government waste project. project. If you put the NAPCO money, cathedral money, all this money to say that, look, let us save one industry that can employ people. That can have ripple multiple effects. effects. Because the oil industry is a long chain. It's a value chain. Long value chain. value chain, yeah. So all the monies we are throwing away, daily and monthly and yearly put them together and save tour thank you tour is something that none of us will support is lease or whatever because the money they are they want we can generate it within the country so that you know the vision of our in making tour the foundation of our development to come on and and a while from the questions that are being asked they for example, I, I, I have um, also well opened. You, there, there is um, a letter already in circulation that we've already read that's indicating um, the decision to sole source, request to adopt mm -hmm. single sole sourcing procurement. You're saying that, well, there's a justification for it. It's lawful, right? Yes. Okay. At the end of the day is the bigger question about the need for transparency regarding the entity and then whether the entity despite all the things you talk about Vito and Vito has been in Ghana for a very long since we discovered it, right? yes. um, whether they have the capacity to undertake the objective of transforming tour and that is where the question is is that not it yes you because see we're not doing this for the public good it looks like the moment someone, the moment someone think 
this is Mekki, it is shrouded. Is it not Mekki? It's shrouded in mystery. Is it not Mekki? So, how is that Mekki when we have not really concluded any deal? I brought in a proposal. Look at it and see whether we can meet halfway or you give it to me or not. And there is a discussion ongoing. And someone chances on that because the government is being tra transparent. Yes, because it Which was government? sent to PPA. Yes, it was sent to PPA for PPA to scrutinize. This PPA. The same PPA we are. Or different PPA. Are Go ahead. About. Yes, PPA. The same PPA. Yes, but... <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the penchant at which we also bastardize state institutions that's the reason why we are today uncle because if really um, we have ppa which has institutional representatives institutional representatives and a board chair appointed by the president and some few other people then they are supposed to scrutinize it went to ppa the deal is out People can see it. Civil society organization can get the deal and read through. And they raised issues on the deal. And the issues and the issues have not been scattered around. There is still a negotiation ongoing. So if someone tells me this is shrouded in mystery, I don't I don't understand how the person understands. Oh, well, you when something comes, you never understand everything. Everything here yeah, is fine for you. No, no, no. Let but me I, just let um, me just read to you. Yes. Uh, please put um, the union statement on, on the screen, Oliver, if you can. And it basically uh, talks about the position of the senior staff, staff. union of TOR, mm? and they are part of UNICOF, yes. Union of Industry, Commerce, and Finance Workers, yes. on the proposed partnership between the Tama Oil Refinery and Torrentco Asset Management. Now, they also go from say, the second paragraph that it is important to draw the attention of the public and well-meaning Ghanaians the fact that for over a decade, TOR has not fully operated in a sustainable way due to political interference. That's right. That's the problem. Now, they say that notable among the current challenges of the company include failure to fund the purchase of crude oil. Failure to fund. Please note it down. Failure to... Awa, please note it down. Yeah. Debt overhangs of over 500 million. You've mentioned that already. All of us are aware. Product accounting challenges. Many critical equipment being left to rot. The equipment are there being left to rot. While Dangote is funding another refinery or his private refinery in Nigeria. Many product storage tanks are out of service due to lack of maintenance. Currently, 20 out of 59 tanks are out of service. Now, you go up. Let's go up. And they are raising some of these key questions about how some of these ideally entities needed um, the commitment of government to have these things resolved. And we're talking about getting the strategic partner who be transparent enough alongside the ministry through TOR to be able to do these things. Is that not a concern enough as being espoused by the union that needs to be addressed directly by the ministry as well as store. I have mentioned it. You that, haven't mentioned it. That there are Just challenges. Around. I said okay. there are challenges with talk, which we all understand. I mentioned the debt. I even mentioned the debt that the yeah. Provident Fund. For the workers that wrote this, there, there is a huge amount of money that's supposed to be paid to them as Provident Fund, which has not been paid. Now, government over the years is managing it. And government has not really been able to manage it to, 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 to work optimally. And we're saying, everyone, including the civil society organizations, are saying that let's bring in a private involvement. Everyone is saying let, let's bring in a private person to really try as much as possible well, to revive yes. it. Mm -hmm. Now, the government has gone in for a private person, a private company by name Torrentco which has named about four companies that they are working with, including Vitol that I mentioned. Now, the deal, they, they, they have brought in their proposal. Their proposal has went through public procurement. Public procurement has referred it to Ministry of Finance. And this is just within one week. It is not something that has really gone, they have to raise the issues. All the issues they have, it's very important that they raise them so that 
when the ministry is taking a decision, the ministry will look at the problems and the challenges we have and will look at the deal before us and see whether if we go ahead with a deal, the deal will help us. That is it. There is a huge debt there. There are a lot of the equipment are getting obsolete because of lack of maintenance. We need someone to maintain them because government has not proven to be able to maintain them. That is the reason I mentioned Gweld. I said Gweld because it, it, it was floated and Ghanaians bought shares and so on. Now, Gweld is the biggest oil marketing company in the country. And it's one of the most efficient and profitable entity in this country. So if really there is a hindsight of Gweld, and we believe that this one too, when we bring in private involvement, you may like the company or you don't like the company. You may have challenges with the company. The most important thing is that, is government doing something on untoward? Is government really doing a shady deal? No, because, as I mentioned earlier, we've not really given the assets of Goyal to any company. It is a process that has started, and this is not the first time. I remember even under, 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 under Mahama, a company came in. They were about to take off. It didn't happen. Under Mills, the same thing. Under Kufford, the same thing. Almost all the years, there are companies that have come to, to really express interest to take over. But we don't see any progress. So now, the board decided that let's have a company. Torrentco came in with a, with a proposal. The proposal is transparent, a reason everyone could read to even raise issues out of it. When you raise the issues, it guides the ministry whether to go ahead or to really... Uh, uh, head uh, ASAP. We have PhDs, we have all the people. We exactly deliberately so. do these things. That's what the civil society is concerned. Exactly. It's not and even, now they want... But the, even, they even want, the civil they want, society are saying that let's bring in private persons. But they think that Torenko is not the best. This is it. If but, you read but, what, but, uh, well, what Imani has said. All of us has, agree has that Tor needs a strategic partner. Yes. But the deal that is shrouded in... A lack of transparency. How is this deal is rather the lack of transparency? It's a question when, of debate. When it has been sent to Now let me PPA. just run you by a copy. And, and these are just uh, normal status and courtesy of ASAP. We've had toll recovery debt levy or toll debt recovery levy. Yes. And, and between the years um, 2009 2015, estimated amount in access 1.9 billion. Billion what? CDs or dollars? Billion cities. cities because they, Billion cities. they've written GHC. GHC, GHC. Yes. yes. And then um, in excess from 2000 um, up to uh, that's from the period up to 2022 in excess 8.9. Um, so from 2003, we said, Charlie, this is what it was. Let's go to the next slide. I think now, this one should be clearer because when you check the the, the statistics, 2009 to 2015, there is 1.9 billion. Mm. But when they came down, they said 203 to 2002, no, no, no. I think 2022. The, 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 so the, it means... The, 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 the 203. So it, it's it, a period of the, the recovery that needs to be undertaken. Yes, because you so see... So the costs. The, 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 debt, the, 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 the tax started in 2003. So you can do 203 to 2022. So we've done that. It's, then uh, it's we look there. at... Between 2003 and 2009, it yeah. was the Kufo we, government we, that was... Yeah, in, we did in, this government. because there was this political, you know, um, government people... Yeah, like, like, you, like I, you, like this, you take people... That's because why the NDC, I wanted, you always... So we yeah, decided to I clarify so that... see the Kufo period, yes, how much yes, was that yes, cruel? I'm saying that, eh? Because sometimes you see you always come, you want to do equalization. So we decide to single the appeal. So you don't come and accuse us that we, we are doing NDC it's not, MPP. It's not, please, it's let me continue. Really, uh, please don't okay. disrupt me, please. Now... If you look at Section 13 of the uh, Debt Recovery um, Fund Act 2008, it says that the minister shall, within three months after the end of each financial year, submit a report on the fund to Parliament. Let's continue. Can I? And this runs through and says the Act provided for the harmonization of major energy sector levies and taxes. Okay. Now, so then it begs a question. Look. We tried it under MPP, NDC. We're now back to MPP. Torrentco is coming in. There's before then legacy and then um, uh, other ones that are also in creating difficulties. And people are worried. Okay. So why 
is the debt still going, growing, and why are we still paying a levy, mm -hmm. knowing that we can't solve the problem for which the debt has been put in place? From the data you provided, yes. the 1.9 plus yeah. 8.9 is about 10.8. No, no, the, the, the 1.9 is within the it's 8.9. Within the 8 .9. No, we just wanted to, okay. you know, yes. um, so you know, a while, a while, I'm, and I'm coming, our people, they like no. equalization. Oh, 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 it's it's while, only please, MPP that does no, equalization. No, no, when you come, you come and accuse. So we decided to <laughs> no, put no, that no. one up. But then you didn't do uh, even uh, a uh, good uh, work. Uh, uh, no, don't worry. You, you, you won't do that thing to you. <laughs> Stop there. Nobody did it. 8.9 billion. It's one year. Yeah, so the accruals from when it was introduced. that to dollars. It depends on the forex period. Yeah, have, have, uh, what, I'm, what I want to say is that mm. if you do a certain calculation, a conversion, conversion, you may arrive at a certain figure mm. of the debt we are supposed to have paid. Mm. Yes. Yes. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, that's true. So mm. the ASF people and the experts mm. should tell us what ought to have been the actual debt. Exactly so. So that don't people, people don't bandy and write that we, we, we owe 500 million if, mm -hmm. when we are continuously paying. Our, you know that if we owe 10 CDs and by providence somebody gives you something and go and pay 2 CDs, it's no longer 10 CDs, 10 CDs. it's yes. 5 CDs. Yes. Right? Yes. So it is not enough to say that we have paid 8.9 billion over the years. Do the monetary cal calculation, mm. the conversions, mm. and let's see how much in dollar terms we have exactly. paid. Even if CD term, in how CD, much we have, have paid? paid. Yes. Okay. And therefore, what should be the debt? If we know this calculation mm. and the figure, mm. then doing strategic thinking will help. Will help. Okay, but you because, know, the, because but Mr. Then, Yali, you know this is paid over time, so it depends on the forex rate at a particular. That's why I'm saying that we can, that we are saying that mm. we, are do, we can do the conversion over time. Okay. This is cumulative, isn't yeah. it? Yes, so please. break it down. That's what I'm asking. So how do we resolve the tall problem? Devoid the, of the, all the political the, machinations and things like that. The tall problem can be solved if we do strategic thinking and not strategic partnership. Why? If we know the actual amount. You see, it is, it is so bad. Let me use the mild word. word bad for us as citizens to continue paying a debt through energy sector levy and then tall recovery uh, 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 levy. We are paying for the mismanagement of a certain group of people. Because if, the last time I checked, they bought 950 million uh, cities worth of petrol, uh, crude oil from, uh, you know, uh, BP. And then when they refined it, it was sitting in their tanks. And you know, you know in that uh, in industry, a day delay is a lot of money. Yeah. Yes. So when they were taking the delivery to refine. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that they didn't have the market to offtake it. It's not offtaker. So this is something somebody must be put on in front of the cameras to answer. Don't you think it was deliberate? Well, that is when we have when, <laughs> when we have we come back adulteration to, in the tanks. tanks you don't think it's adulteration. because when the adulteration happens, there was no at, adulteration at well, all. Listen, when there's when there's adulteration in the tanks at a certain level, it has to be offloaded. It has to be sold out. So sold out, and we have. So that several times. Yes, that. yes, yes, yes. You remember moving pin and bust. You remember, you know, Roland. All right. That is one of the solutions. Mm. This is a time that all persons who have managed tour, according to the workers, mm. who did not know why the tour was established. Mm. Two, we should stop political appointments. So who should we appoint? Look, this country. Because the appointment the, these days, there are younger persons like Gawal. And the rest. No, I want, I want the way he's talking. No, no, no. <laughs> but I'm <laughs>
you go and investigate, I mean, manage God. Yeah. See, look at the road construction and other things. When you give the road to a Chinese, the workers that do the overhead and are they Chinese? Mm, mainly no. I mean, Ghanaians. I want also yeah. the workers that do the foot bridges, under bridges, what the canals and everything are Ghanaians. But they are guided by experts. Experts. And so it means our experts are not good. The factory hand is good, but the expert is not good. The experts are good, but we don't ex identify the good experts. Okay, let me let me ask a question. Let me pose a question to you. And this one was sent to me by uh, a, 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 a colleague as well. Very distinguished, well, I think 23 is in the industry. He says, I should run this question by you, a minute each. Why do we run down a company which can be profitable only to turn around to diversify? It? That's right. Answer it for me. Look, because the person, one day if your party wins, you you be the, there. The person who has gone to see the Pope, mm -hmm. and the Pope has told him that go and invest in uh, uh, Tor. Huh? I think it's the Pope that told him. Is he going to be able to turn around the uh, the Tor? If there's nothing in it, why would he? Why he's coming? Is, is he coming? Ronald, TV3 mm -hmm. used to be a state organization. Yeah, TV3. No. Long time ago, it was not, not a Ghana, no, you the mean, Ghana film industry. You mean there was there was a Ghana film industry? Okay. TV three was an entity. That the new one, but I'm saying by, that by the Malaysian private partners. investment is so, good. So it's not, it's, TV three has never been a state organization. I just thank want you. to correct that. Thank you very much. But I am saying that we have state institutions that have been managed well by pro, uh, Ghanaians that were properly selected, like TV three. Like TV three, mm -hmm. yes. When a the private Malaysia, entity that has been well managed, managed. very good. That, we have, that's one our have, have it. It. Mm. And we have a state private institu institution like Goyle that has also been properly managed. Ma managed. It means that if you want to do it, we can do it. So one, get proper Ghanaians. No, Roland, so the money that we are going to borrow, uh, the, I mean, we are going to bring in, can't we as a country say that, look, we are indebted, whatever it is. But for toll alone, let us borrow to save it and put and that, get it running. Mm. So Goel has Answer that. yes, Goel has. In addition, uh, what, yes, I'm why coming. is Dan Goti able to do it and we don't do it? Yes, because he's a private person. And um, as an MPP, uh, we we believe in the liberal economy, and I believe that Goel, the, the the decision by the Kufu administration to make Goel to to make private people to enter well is what we see today. It's headed by a politician, a lawyer, um, Osei Prempe. Mm. He's now the CEO for Guel. Mm. But because there is a private involvement, you have some checks and balances within the state agency. I still don't believe the state can really run. You mean that's what MPP believes or you? But uh, benefit of hindsight. Tell me which state agency is being run efficiently without a private involvement. This is a serious indictment on us as Ghani, as a people. But this is, this is the reality. Well, so, this is uh, the reality. Tell me uh, which uh, state uh, is uh, well, I know your mind now, so it's okay. You, uh, any, uh, so, okay. <laughs> so now let's go to Asinov. Let's quickly try and wrap up. <laughs> Asinov. They, which is solve problems, isn't it? All right. Not to talk about anything. That is the reason we are all bringing right. in partners to be able to at least uh, And it's the partner, make it, partners you are bringing in that is shrouded in all it's this lack not, of transparency. It's not shrouded. You are here it's it's transparent. Because at least it's open. Please, let's... 